Hey traders, Raggy here. This is your Simpler Futures free video for May 18th. And what we're going to do is talk about the NAS and the Nikkei, follow up on some conversations that we had yesterday. Both these markets were in uptrends before yesterday's big drop. And what I wanted to do is get opportunistic on corrections for the uptrends on two markets that I feel were unjustly sold off because of the political uncertainty, because of the political turmoil. So buying a pullback in the Nikkei and buying a pullback in the NAS were two plays that we took yesterday. Actually, remember something. Right now, to be a futures trader, I think to have more of a Forex mindset. And what do I mean by that? You know, you're talking to a trader who's been trading futures since she was 15 years old. I'm going to be 46 this year. But what I've been doing since about 2000 is trading Forex. That means my life has been on a 24 hour clock. You know, understand that the market, the Forex market kind of follows the sun across the world. So a 24 hour market, you get pretty darn spoiled. You know, you can play different narratives regardless of the time of day that they're hitting the psychology, hitting the market. Well, futures are a very similar scenario. So I'm not waiting, by the way, for 9.30 a.m. Eastern to play the Nikkei, to play the NAS. I'm already looking at these into the Asian session. You don't have to watch the markets 24 hours. You don't have to. You can, it's an opportunity. So think about how you can embrace that 24 hour market. And I did this last night. Now, what am I using for confirmation? One of the things we talked about was waiting for an intraday trend reversal, trying to find a time at which the downtrend that we saw actually hooks back up and gives us indication of bullish momentum. You can be as short term as a five, you can be as longer term as something like a 60 or a 30. OK, now, if you want a little bit more of a conservative confirmation of an intraday trend reversal, I will typically recommend the 30 minute or the 60 minute. Because you can see here, there's the 17th, there's your sell off, it's the big sell off in the knee, in the Nasdaq and then crossing back up through 5600. That was confirmation of the bullishness. Well, my entry on the NQ was between 55.55 and 55.85. So some of you might say, well, Rog, are you waiting for the 5,600 level to get broken? Here's where you have a choice, okay? And there's always a trade-off. So here's where you have a choice. If you are comfortable playing retracements and exhaustion, if you like buying at support, this tells you something about your personality. It's not about a right or wrong, it's about self-awareness. If you're comfortable playing exhaustion, and that's something I do like. I like corrections. I like swings. And if I think I've got a level that's an exhaustion level, I'll jump in. I'll put a stop at the validity of the trend, which for me is going to be on the other side of 55.20, even 55.30. And I'm going to hop in believing that this is an exhaustive move after the kind of sell-off that we saw yesterday. But that I should also be open to a little bit of selling, a little additional selling, because we closed at the bottom of the candle. Here's a good clue. When we, when we close heavy, right? Not when we're leaving a wick behind at the lows, but we, when we close heavy down near the lows, rest assured, you're probably gonna see a little bit more selling when, next, when the next financial center opens up. In fact, when the Asian sessions opened up, they opened up down because they were taking their cues off that heavy US selling. So you're not going to be surprised to see that. So either you tolerate a little bit more weakness or you keep your zone of entry open and you remember that you can place a limit order to buy at 55.85 or 55.55. We made a low at 55.75 uh, 55 or 74 and then we made a low at 55.50. So both those levels were hit. Staying opportunistic Having multiple levels of support keep you from being defensive and keep you on the offense, which psychologically is much more comfortable. Okay, that's how I managed that. And then in yesterday's video, I mentioned, and let me reiterate it now, a 30 pip zone for the NQ is actually a very allowable zone. What do I mean by that? It's well within an hourly or daily price movement range. In other words, 
That kind of movement is just a normal everyday walk in the park for this symbol. I should be ready for that kind of fluctuation throughout the day for the NQ. So with that 55, 55 to 55, 85 zone, we were able to now see the follow through back up through 5,600 and now here at a level where we have a little bit of a nice profit cushion. So a lot of times traders will say, Rog, I'm not comfortable buying those lows. Stepping in and expecting the market to exhaust there makes me uncomfortable. Fair enough, because what if the market kept right on selling off, right? So the flip side is waiting for momentum. Every entry you make is going to be either an exhaustion or momentum setup. And you may not know which it is you're doing. Here's how you know. Do you buy when the market sinks down to support and buy at a floor? Or do you like to buy when the market breaks through resistance or through a ceiling? If you like the latter, you're a momentum trader. So where's the momentum play? It's not a matter of right or wrong, it's, it's your wiring, it's your self-awareness. Basically in this area here, as we break up through 56. Now notice, what's the difference? It's about, depending upon your zone, it's anywhere from about 20, well, from that 5585, it's about 20 points you're giving up to be able to get in the market with the wind at your back, right? With some bullish momentum. And for some traders, that's what they need. They're not comfortable buying down here on exhaustion, but rather they'll play some Momo. They rather have the, the wind at their back. And as the market is breaking or ceiling, they'll go ahead and get long. Okay, what do you do? Well, you get some extra confirmation, but you're giving up, you know, that area between 55, 55, about 50 pips to 20 pips or points, I should say points, 50 to 20 points. Okay, but this is a good confirmation. Who else could use this? That same exhaustion trader who played this trade down here could keep an eye on the 30 minute time frame and say, okay, at what point could I see this market catapult higher? If it takes out 5,600, Fantastic. This is a great way for me to have guidance throughout the trading day. Without living and dying with every tick, I can very calmly assess what the market's doing and where I could see this market accelerate in my favor. Same thing with the NK. So I'm talking to today to you a little bit about the post-entry psychology and the at the entry psychology. Not that anything is right or wrong here, but you have to identify which type of market participant you tend to be and work with that. Okay, this notion that you're gonna change yourself <laughs> is a pretty tough one. Be self-aware, ask yourself what type of entry style tends to lend itself more easily to you and then go with that. That's your superpower, go with it, okay? So today, a little bit different a video, but I think it's really important, an important follow-up to yesterday's conversation. Also, those of you that like playing the currency futures and currencies in general, that's gonna be a part of the reboot, the relaunch of Simpler Forex. Uh, sorry, sorry, Simpler Futures, kind of a Freudian slip there, because I'll be bringing over a lot of my global macro and currency trading, and even some of these country ETFs over to Simpler Futures. And so you'll be able to understand how currencies affect your commodities trades, your futures trades, and they do. So partly if I'm putting on a trade in the EC, the Euro FX, I'm gonna be looking at the Euro US. And the market did indeed exhaust in the zone between 11 and 11.50 on the Euro US, which gave our US dollar buys a little bit of a reprieve. So some traders actually had some decent trades, buying US dollar against Canadian dollar, thinks Canadian dollar futures, or New Zealand dollar, okay? And I'll talk more about some of these currencies plays in upcoming videos, but I just want you to know that partly what we will be carrying over as we kind of merge Simpler Futures and Simpler Forex into one big Simpler Futures site on this reboot, Simpler Futures 2.0, I'll be bringing over that global macro perspective. So I'm super stoked to bring that to you. All right, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next update.